And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Yasuo Leona. So our newest expansion, Guardians of the Ancient, has added in a bunch of stun cards into the metagame. And so we're going to try those out with Yasuo for the first time. A lot of those stun cards have to deal with Daybreak. And so combining those stun cards with Daybreak with Leona, also another good idea. So we're going to try these two champions together again, Leona Yasuo. This is, um, of course, a, a champion combination we've used before to, you know, all right success. But I think some of these new cards could be really nice. Like we have Eye of the Rahoric, which is a Daybreak card that can stun four total things which really helps level up your Yasuo, considering Yasuo only needs to see five. Um, but of course, if you have a Yasuo or a level up Yasuo in play, you, you can start doing a lot of damage with that. We also have a new two drop, Solari Sunhawk. Going to be a two drop that can stun. Um, that's going to be a nice pairing in here. And uh, I guess that's kind of about it for like the stun, you know, but yeah, I guess that's kind of about it. But those two are, are very big additions, adding in, you know, another six cards. You know, like when you're only talking about 40, like that's a good percentage of the deck. Um, we're also going to try out two copies of Syncopation to help protect Yasuo or Leona, help protect our champions and do some cool swap stuff. I think this could also work, Syncopation could also work uh, proactively with Fey Blade Twirler. If you make like an 11 power flight Fey Blade Twirler, which definitely happens, or even, you know, larger with either Hork. You can use syncopation and just kind of one-shot your opponent, you know, even if you can get this like 20 power or something by uh, moving it to wherever, whatever unit they don't block. I'm playing three Guiding Touch in here because of Aurelia Azir with them attacking with a bunch of small units all the time. We're going to be blocking with our little bit larger units, but that's going to damage our units. And so Guiding Touch can be something that can kind of heal our units and, and help them out a little bit with that um, and let them be able to block more. And they can also heal our Nexus against, you know, uh, burn strategies. All right, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's let's see how we do here with Yasuo Leona. That should be an exciting one. We'll go play our five games in ranked. Okay, well, there is Aurelia Azir. We didn't get to play against Aurelia Azir with Trundle Braum. I wanted to try that out, but Trundle Braum is just still a great deck, but we didn't get to see how that matchup would play out. We'll keep Yasuo Mulligan the rest. Here we go, a couple Blade Twirlers. Yeah, I could see this being a tough matchup. We'll have to see. They don't have, like, the most removal for a card like Yasuo. So if we can get Yasuo in play and then start stunning a lot of things, like, it can do a lot of damage to their things. Of course, we're gonna... I'm planning on waiting for the Sun... on the Sunhawk. I'll just take the attack, too. I think we can kind of just keep setting up a little bit here. I, I don't think... I think we can take some damage. So like their best card is like the four mana return card. They would put the dra dancing droplet back in their hand and bounce the Yasuo. Serima's legacy will endure. We Ionians always remember those who came before us. I mean, I guess besides that, Azir is all always the best card for them to have. Here's our 
What do, yeah, I, what do you mean the five mana heal five? There, so there's the daybreak card. There's the there's the four mana five four life steal, and obviously I'd like to play that card, but I couldn't quite find didn't quite really find room for it. It's, it's both of our champions already cost four, and so it makes that you know, pretty awkward playing even more fours. But yeah, obviously this didn't really work out. I only have one stun card. Yeah, this didn't work out. Alright, good game. Oh, star shaping? Yeah. We just don't we don't really play that many other celestials for star shaping. Okay, so we got the we got the tough matchups this time. So really a Zir now Thresh Nasus. Yeah, you know, maybe star shaping instead of guiding touch. I could uh, certainly see that. So this kind of deck, we definitely need both of our champions. Like our, our champions are really important. So if you shouldn't just keep like a whole bunch of things that aren't champions most of the time. And so that's why I mulligan to the other three cards. The waters give you life, child. Follow the horizon. No ways, no. Glorious end. All right, so they have two slay. Saving Shield Bear is something to play a little bit of defense. Taking the Red and Stars because we need our champions. Gonna find a gift for an action, right, Arda? We'll get our licks in. Can't stop that. Okay, a champion. I think it's a perfectly reasonable time to go ahead and just play Leona. Um, yeah, it looks just fine. Cool, no, no other glimpse beyond, that's good. Not as good. My faith protects me. I am the bulwark against darkness. They grow up so fast. That's nine damage. Make it five. They're done. Wow, Yasuo is really good. You just play Yasuo and they concede. That card is so good. Just play it. They just drew. They just drew two cards, and they're like, "No, I can't handle it. I'm done." Yasuo, the most powerful card in the game. <laughs>
Robin does go along with Leona quite well, but obviously that's very slow. I think I'm still going to keep that, though. It's just that's a really good combination. How many single patients am I playing? Yeah, I'm playing the two. That's right. Yeah, because of the one three. Yeah, it's a, it's a new world. Yasuo is really good. Makes opponents concede. It's a new world. No, I don't think this is a Kihiri deck. Opponent stack. I think they just. I think there is just lots and lots of card draw, and so you can find time bombs, and you have tons of card draw to go along with Twisted Fate. It's like. I think it's kind of similar to the casino deck with Twisted Fate and Jinx. It's just playing Sharima instead of PNZ and then get Godzillion in. My faith protects me. Burn away doubt. I kind of want to pass here. They don't waste any mana. Let's see if they do anything post combat. Okay, cool. They didn't do anything anyway, so just got three free damage in. Okay, you think they have Kahiri to keep them from milling as easily? I guess that is a possibility. I'm not expecting it though, but I guess it, it's a possibility. Guess, am I supposed to play Yasuo first? I guess maybe I am. I want to play Leona, you know, to keep this Daybreak chain going. Because now next turn, with 6 mana, I can go Yasuo first and then play the 2-3, but it'll still count as Daybreak because of the Robin, and so then we'll double stun. I was expecting the Robin to take two damage, and then I was going to Guiding Touch the Robin like they were going to. Blah. And then they were going to use like a removal spell and like, three damage or something. I was going to Guiding Touch it, but. Not the worst thing. They used a removal spell and it didn't kill my champions. So, not the worst thing at all. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. The sleep is for the guiltless. A game. Go on then. Watch the ball, folks. Things about to level up. Please tell me I have the mana. No, I have, don't have the mana for the warrior. Of course, I want the warrior to challenge Twisted Fate. Yeah, it's just waiting too long if I wait till next turn to try to challenge it. Oh, wait, I, I can just Concussive Palm it. Alright, so I probably still just want the Traveler. Because where are they at? Because they're at 7. The ball, folks. One blade, one purpose. Some things never dull. Where are you going? Harvey. Make it worth my while. Does five to a unit? Can't stop five damage. That card's good. Like giving 
giving Bilgewater a real removal spell is really nice. Yeah, that card's good. I was really hoping it was, you know, like the Bone Skewer that I could, you know, save. You know, use the Guiding Touch to save, but... I kind of assume that they found another twist of fate by now, anyway, and that killing this one maybe d isn't really going to pay off the dividends that I wanted to. Well, they just played a twist of fate's pick a card, so maybe they don't have another twist of fate after that. They have to have a third. Is Bone Skewer fast speed? It is fast speed. Okay, that card's awesome with Twisted Fate. I hadn't thought about that card before with Twisted Fate, of like saving Twisted Fate and putting Twisted Fate back on top. Even even if you don't have leveled up Twisted Fate, just to be able to get more um, gold cards and everything, like more, you know, more of all the the different cards. That card's really good with Twisted Fate. So I should have taken the big elusive, right? Like, I, that's what I should have taken with this Traveler. I shouldn't have taken that that spell. Back at the table. Yeah, I, I think this game's over. Blue as the Serpentine. If I just didn't attack with that Robin, just didn't attack that round, I wonder what would have happened. No, they could they still would have done the plus three plus one in Bone Skewer, but then I would have syncopate though for that. I don't know. I wonder what would have happened if I didn't attack that round. This whole game might have been different. Unfortunately, none of these cards matter. So like I, I need to guiding touch to be able to draw into something that matters, but then at that point, then it takes away all the daybreak. So I could like daybreak first, but then if I if I daybreak first and then Guiding touch, then I don't have any mana to play anything that matters. I, just, I don't need to play a daybreak card, I guess. Any card that matters. Nope. All unbelievers will see the light. Yeah, Xenotype Researchers is great with the high roll, right? Like, you know, best case scenarios. But when it's just a generic 3-3 three, three for 3, and if you don't get to, to find anything that it hits, it's below average on impact. You know, especially now they have this new 3-drop that support, you know, like, the, that's this card. It makes it difficult to play um, Xenotype Researchers. But, yeah, if you can if you can hit it, it's it's pretty great. Opponent. The sky's so yeah, I need, needed to do a better job protecting Robin and Yasuo. Those were the two cards really needed. <laughs> like Targon, but slower. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Guiding Touch is underperforming as far as a, a spell goes for us. 
I don't know the exact card that it should be, but it's I'm just noting that it's been underperforming. Think you're fast? Cute. Pick on someone your own speed. One damage. One damage isn't worth a shape stone. Like plus one plus one card. Good single page draw. Yeah, so they could, they could be star shapings. I wouldn't mind one more. Just never worth doing that. I wouldn't mind one more um, celestial card if we play star shaping. The Yasuo vulnerable is permanent. You cannot sway me. Sure about the soldier, but I figured I'd still have like the ability to play the soldier if I wanted to. Discipline and conviction. The Emperor commands the land obey. Some things never die. He also is not showing vulnerable, is it? Oh, is that? Oh, the reckless player was just vulnerable that round. glad they played something before combat. With Yasuo decks, you don't usually want to play things before combat. So that's going to be two damage. That will level up Yasuo. So now Yasuo is going to strike. So now we'll kill the Merciless Hunter as well. And we are... Oh, never mind. That thing's smaller than, Yasuo, than Merciless Hunter. Right. Well, that's better for me. A good draw. One blade, one purpose. Sands beneath me and winds behind me. Hey, Joanna. I know I had Steel Tempest, but I can also just save Steel Tempest. If, if I'm not taking damage, I shouldn't be that worried. And yeah, I want the Daybreak. Well, 
Alright, so I'll still go ahead and play Soldier. Yeah. Proud warriors of the sun's true light. Then I'll play Priestess right here. Bask in her radiant blessing, the sun's splendor reveals. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about this game. We actually got a, a real good Yasuo game. This is one where if they would have open attacked that turn the turn seven, whenever I had the Yone, if they would have open attacked that round, uh, they would have killed me. But they did not. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's not even lethal anyway. Alright, whatever, I'll just attack. It's a surprising block. That would have been a very good card. Yeah, that card would have been a problem. But because of Ruin Runner, I didn't want to play the Blade Twirler so that I could have both Obliterate and Steel Tempest available. No, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. So they're, yeah, so they're on Shadow for some aggressive stuff for like Doom Beast and Harrowing and um, there's a Frenzied Skitter in there. Draven Ezreal. Um, nah, we can't keep that card, can we? Nah. I want to, but we shouldn't. Well, we're all about the Blade Twirlers. Unfortunately, no champions yet. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. Could see a Thermo for three. There's a champ. Don't blink, or you miss me. Doesn't seem like our, our deck just has kind of too many. Like we need more spells, more card draw, more. It's so like yeah, maybe some of the celestial stuff. It does seem like we just have too many just vanilla units, too many two drops. Like maybe like we should get rid of Shield Bear and play just Blade Twirler and Sunhawk for our two drops. It was our first, it's our first attempt at Yasuo Leon. I think that there's the tools here with this deck, but I think our, our deck list is probably a little off. I don't miss. Can't stop me. Firing. Go where the road takes me. This hawk should have elusive. I guess not all hawks have elusive. I guess there's a lot of hawks that don't have elusive, but it looks like it's flying around. It should be an elusive hawk. Wow, that's one of the best four drops you can hit. Well, wow, that's one of the very best hit things to hit. I 
Because yeah, I'm like down out. I'm like out of cards, right? I only have two cards left. I have three times as many cards as I do. Because like that, that one four mana card, that Tribune and Probulator, traded, it killed my two three and it got rid of my combat spell and it gave them a four five. It was a three for one. And all these things that are going to do is just stun. So like that's that's like what we've kind of been run seeing with this deck is that we've just been running out of cards and running out of important cards too. Um, just like against the uh, Twisted Fate deck, it's like we had just some units in hand, but they don't really do anything on their own. And so I think I think our I think it need we need some work around the edges. There are just way too many cards that don't do anything in our deck. Daybreak anymore. Like we're really relying on Robin and our champions. We only had Robin the one game. Good enough for me. Okay, so we went too hard on on Daybreak and um. Like just too many like generic units. At least that's what it man, but looking at the list, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it. It's just that seems like all we were drawing. We always had Like we have too many like soldiers, shield bearers, blade twirler, sunhawk, it felt like. It felt like that's all we had every single game. And then either Horik doesn't really do anything unless you have like, you have to have Yasuo in play for this card, or you have to have, like, a good board that's attacking. And I, f I thought that, like, with our units and stuff, we'd have, like, a good board to attack with. But considering we were not playing any other removal, it would just, like, stun two blockers, but they would just have, like, their... They'd have their good blockers, and it stunned their bad blockers anyway, but they'd still have their good blockers. So this, this card underperformed quite a bit. Yeah, so I would... I think that Shield Bearer could go, and Guiding Touch really underperformed... I was trying to Nopify because of all these really Azir decks. Like, they're all playing a whole bunch of spells. You know, like, so, so many, like, the bounce spells. And Nopify's value has gone up quite a bit because of that. So I think that they're, they're probably... There just needs more... We need more late game and power and everything. So you all know what that means. When you're Targon, you need, you need that kind of stuff. That means you need Celestials. But yeah, Star Shaping would have been much, much better than Guiding Touch. We'd get Star Shaping in here. So Star Shaping and Priestess, is that enough Celestial cards? Probably not. Because um, there's also like the Invoke Double Stun. So there's the Double Stun Invoke card. But I don't really want to play Spacey Sketcher. So it could just be Super Cool Star Chart. Um, I think I would rather have Super Cool Star Chart over Behold the Infinite. That can be real random. A way to give you like some Equinox or some Double Stun. Besides that, some recall didn't seem bad. Like, didn't seem like it would have been bad. Concussive Palm. Concussive, Concussive Palm wasn't very good. I think more well, like a homecoming. Because we can use homecoming as like a pseudo protection for our champions as well. And then also just kind of give us some interaction. But it, it's not bad to bounce. I don't know. I guess Sunhawk. I guess if we if we were getting rid of that two, you know, soldier or Sunhawk, if we're getting rid of that other two mana card, that's. Because it's one last card that we want to recall. No, I wouldn't want to take out a Leona for a Malphite. I don't think. You can, but you'd have to really rely on this Eye of the Rehoric, which I wasn't that impressed with. Yeah, you could play Mina as a finisher instead of a Yone if you want, but it's a lot of mana. We, the Yone was fine. But yeah, this, this Yone could be a lot of different things. Like, the Yone could be Eclipse Dragon, could be Mina... You know, so yeah, you you know, you could go Eclipse Dragon there, or, or Mina Swiftfoot, or or Infinite Mind Splitter. A lot of those kind of cards are they're all very powerful, and they all are kind of situational as well. And so like you can play any of those kind of things. Maybe Sunburst is just like give us some removal. Sunburst is usually pretty good, but I think I would try this. I think this is like the new list that I would kind of recommend trying out. I think this. Give us like some more power at the top end with star shaping, some better interaction with homecoming, and a super cool star chart, and give us just more options with that. I think that's going to make our deck less vanilla. Our deck was just too vanilla and just didn't didn't really have any top end or punch or anything like that. All right, but there we go. So that's Yasuo Leona.
you know, first try, right? You know, like it's new format, new cards and stuff. Got to keep on trying. It's, they're not always not always going to be perfect right away, but there's a lot of potential with these champions and with these cards. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, give this new list a try with these changes and let me know how it goes for you. Let me know how um, how it does. I would be really interested to hear, you know, because we're going to be going to our next deck now, but I'd be really interested to hear how um, y'all like this second list compared to the first list and so on. And if you got other good ideas for Yasuo Leona, I'm all ears. So if you've been playing Yasuo Leona yourself, leave those comments. Let me know how it's been going for you and what maybe what, what does your list look like, what's been working for you, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'd be very interested. All right, but that's all I got here for Yasuo Leona. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.